do you know where your food comes from? It's a question that I ask every chance I get. Why don't we know where our food comes from? Why don't we know what's in it? When you were seven, eight years old, nine years old, you asked these questions of your parents. The answer you got was not politically correct, right? Eat your food and just move on. We used to have this very innate, sacred relationship with food. There's been a lot of progress, which has been amazing. But as that's happened, we've become further and further from our food and understanding how that works. During the season, which is just wrapping up, we'll do between 800 and 1,000 people a day. We get deliveries seven days a week. We really try and use local produce. And in the summer, you, you can't grow anything. We want something better. We want local farming. but. At the same time, there's there's no options available. We grow about 80 different kinds of vegetables through the season. Our season is from October until May. We do vegetable for the restaurant, farm to table dinner for CSA, and we have a green market. I am like a squirrel. I move food around from saving from one team, giving it to somebody else. The big guys, they can sell out to New York. But us, we think that it should be leaving here be there in a matter of hours instead of days. To me, it's important to keep the quality of the food intact. I started this company because I was exposed to something that I didn't know. Any fresh produce item that travels 4,500 miles or greater loses almost 50% of its nutritional value. And that's just one part of the problem. The process by which we grow that food, another part of the problem pesticides that we use or the fertilizers that we use, those all have environmental impacts. As we've used a lot of the landmass, that's impacted our biodiversity. I went into pediatrics because I was really focused on prevention. Many of these children, already at very young ages, as young as three, four, five, were suffering from chronic disease. And so I ended up joining the Governor's Office of Planning and Research for the state of California. What was fascinating is I would be at meetings around climate, and then I would be at meetings around creating total prevention and health, and I realized we were working on very similar things, but just talking about it differently. As you look across the history of the food system, science and technology has been fundamental to transforming how we access food, how we transport food, and really accelerating to get to the point we are now. I think the really interesting question is what does that mean for what comes next? By moving indoors, you eliminate the majority of the risk to airborne pathogens and bacteria, which are the leading causes of foodborne illness in America. We build production facilities that some people call greenhouses or glasshouses to grow food using data. We start by designing a food system that doesn't have production geographically dispersed from where the consumption needs to occur but bringing it closer. We had the crazy idea to go to one of the largest providers of blockchain infrastructure in the world and ask them to build us our own network, to trace every single unit, not batch, every single unit that comes out of any of our production sites. We have digital custody of that item the entire way. We know the story of that head of lettuce just like we were there chronicling it every moment of its life till it gets to where it needs to. 10 years that I've been at this, I've seen the shift in how people think about their food. A lot of restaurants are into sourcing. That's a huge thing for chefs right now. People ask all the time, like, where is this from? Definitely didn't see that 10 years ago. These artichokes are from California. Made a journey. Made a journey, exactly what we're talking about, right? Imagine if those were from Florida. Yeah. So we've got to find better ways of utilizing the resources in a regenerative fashion, uh -huh. in a sustainable fashion, but at the same time, in a way that it actually makes greater efficiency within the process. So that that food system will be able to evolve underpinned by sustainability of it all. If there's no water, there's no artichokes. Right. 
I want to make sure that people around me can learn about food, what to do with the local food, and educate them that the children should be able to eat properly. We're seeing health insurance companies create food as medicine programs, really start to think about reimbursement differently to help heal people. And so I think there's a lot of opportunity there to make those connections for food companies. The consumer has been really far removed from food. As we really think about the future, how do we bring that experience back and empower the person who's ultimately buying that food to be able to experience it? I'm not espousing that we're the only company that has a true moral compass and believes in going the extra mile. You can do the right thing and still make money. Where I come from is the world of finance. If you understand it, the math is irrefutable. You have to be sustainable to make money going forward. If you're not, the resources that you need are getting more expensive and harder to come by. So if you're sustainable in utilization of those resources, your window of being able to operate with said resources is extended. If not, it's truncated. Again, it's just math.